Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for episode 24 of Bumbling Through Birthright. If this is your first time here, make sure you check out the playlist and go back to the beginning and just have a binge sesh. And if you just missed the last episode, make sure you check out the link down below to catch up on that. Quick recap, at the end of the last session, we were back in Hollingholmen and we were doing our domain turns. Well, it's a new session. We've got some more characters with us this time. So last time there were only three of us. This time we're back up to a six. We've doubled our party. Would have been super convenient to have all six while we were in that dungeon, but it's fine. We did, in the end, survive. So for this session we had Roz, Rainier, Brindis, Renolfer, Jan, and Val, which is our entire party, so that is awesome. But because a few of them had missed a couple sessions, we had to catch them up with their long rests and their domain turns. So Jan went first. He did gun proficiency training for all three of his weeks. Went pretty well. He had a little bit of a minor complication where he got an injury from a kickback, but other than that, pretty okay. And then next Rainier went and he just went carousing for three weeks. He's got hunting lodges and he is trying to promote them like crazy because he wants business to be good. So let's spend time doing that. He had a bit of a complication where he had to spend a little bit of extra money and also someone who was super against hunting, but overall not too much of a problem. Next was Renolfer. For his long rest, he decided to work on gambling proficiency. Because if you know Renolfer at all, he loves to gamble. He's either giving sermons at a church or he is gambling. He has nothing in between, just so. Anyway, that's what he does. And then next we got to their domain turns because again, they each missed a domain turn. Rainier takes the time to level up his hunting lodge in Arvald to a level two. Simple, nothing went wrong, so that's great. And then Jan has the option to invest in taking his firearm technology that Olaf from Olaf Armaments is working on and either investing in pistols or investing in cannons. And he decides to go cannons because cannons are pretty awesome, but pistols handheld, so that's also pretty convenient. He also tries to put Olaf's armaments up to a level four holding and he succeeds in that. For his domain turn, instead of trying to level something up, Renolfer just decides to continue working on his gambling proficiency and he manages to get his gambling proficiency in those first three weeks. That's all he had left to do. So he decides to spend the last week gambling and now that he's very pompous and sure of himself with his new skills, he goes and he bets a thousand gold pieces, which is the max you can do. And he wins, and he wins half of that back. So he is just feeling on top of the world. Next, as you know, we're just chilling in this winter month. Jan brings some of this lizard, it's actually dinosaur skin they had, and he brings it to someone to make him a suit. That's, that should be interesting. <laughs> and um, Sparty, who's of the Freeman Council, shows up and is like, why are you giving our land away to the Orogs? That's not a cool thing. And we're like, cool, thanks for your input. It's done, like what can we do? <laughs> then we decide, you know, last session Val tried to level up her ship holding and it didn't work. So you know what, it's not too far away. Let's go there and see what's going on. And this time, you know, we decide to take the guards. We like never take the queen's guards. She's got 25 guards plus the captain Einar. We never take them, but we decide to take them this time. Why not? You know, it's been a while since we pulled you out of the stable. So away we go to figure out what the heck is going on at the shipyard. While we're on our way, about two days into travel, suddenly we just see convoys of people coming towards us and we're like, what the heck is going on? And some scouts show up and they're like, these are some of the citizens of Maelstrom, which is a small town, I guess, near the coast and also near the shipyard. And they've been told to evacuate it because there are problems. And we're like, what the heck's going on? So we continue on. We find there's a caravan that's stuck in the snow. Cause we're wondering, you know, we sent the nomads down here. Plus there were the Anurian loggers. Plus we had some scouts like, is, are they fighting? What's going on? And we see a caravan and it's stuck in the snow and you have some of the nomads and also some of the loggers trying to get it out. So they're working together, so I mean, that's a good thing, but what is this problem? It's then that the nomads notice something coming out of the woods and they start yelling and like getting into battle formation. And we look and we see these creepy tree-like creatures coming out. I imagine ants in various sizes, like some small ones, some big ones. 
And the big one is just comes out and just starts wrecking things up, including Jan. I, I mean, I know it didn't happen where he just grabbed Jan by the side and was like thump, thump, thump. But it kind of feel like it was. The big one was a bit of a struggle to take care of, but the little ones, the wizard just caught on fire. So that was awesome. This is like Roz's element, catch things on fire. And so we decide to try to gather information to figure out what the heck's going on because we've never seen tree creatures like this before. And the loggers say that a couple weeks after the nomad tribe, the Lodis showed up, trees started attacking. And one of the Lodi tribe members is there and he says, yeah, you know, Jovengard went out into the woods, our prophet, and um, we haven't seen him since, but after we went out there, all these trees came and started attacking and it's not a good situation. So before dealing with the city and what's going on there, we decide to stop in at the shipyard because it is on the way and maybe we can get additional information. And when we get there, we learn that the trees have been attacking the shipyard as well. And this is why it couldn't be leveled up. So, not only do we have to deal with this problem because it's a problem for our people, but it's also a problem for Val and we want to level up her holding, so we need to go deal with these trees. I mean, we deal with the trees anyways, but it's personal now. So we take the night to rest at the shipyard and the next day we go into the woods and we start tracking the nomads and specifically trying to find Jovengard because he's probably the cause of this. We come across a few tribesmen from the Lodi tribe and they are dead and we keep going. We make camp. The next day we get attacked by some trees. It's kind of kind of what's happening obviously. They know we're coming now. They're gonna try to kill us. <laughs> the next day we go we find more dead tribesmen and just about at nightfall, we hear some weird sounds and noises and we pop out into this clearing. And right in the middle of this clearing on this stump is Jovengard and he is doing some sort of ritual. It's basically an Eric spell, Eric being the god, Eric's realm, something like that, that can bring trees to life. But he's not very good at controlling them, this Jovengard, so it's just, it's getting, it's, it's gotten out of hand. Basically, there's two ways to stop this ritual from happening. One, any caster can try to undo that magic spell, or two, you can kill the person that's casting it. We're violent people, I think you can guess which way we went. Also, it's not like it's gonna be fine, like, oh, just stab him, or just undo the ritual. Trees are gonna attack us while we're doing this, and because it's kind of the source of the power, it's actually the source of the province as well, things are super gonna try to kill us while we're doing this. Turns out that Jovengard is like a monk, and so he's really hard to beat up, and so there's quite a few punches and stuff going on in the middle. Rainier and Val are in there. Meanwhile, the rest of us are kind of on the periphery. One of those really big trees comes out, but very recently, Roz learned this new spell called Blight that she hadn't been able to use yet. I mean, it's kind of, it's necromantic, so it's kind of dicey for her because she's not really into necromancy from her country, so, but it's really cool, especially on creatures, like trees, super saps their life and kills them good. So that was exciting. Finally, Val manages to stab Jovengard through the heart and she actually gets some blood points, which is super awesome. So blood points are great. Just stab everything through the heart in birthright. If you're ever playing, just stab it through the heart. After that's dealt with, the tree problem is sorted. And so we decide to head on to Maelstead because we need to check in with that city and see what's going on. We need to check in with Einar and the Queen's guards because we straight up left them. We were like, oh no, sign of trouble, stay here, we got this. And also kind of see what's going on with the loggers and also with the nomadic tribe and whatever's left of that. The scouts and the Queen's guards are patrolling with the nomads and when we get there they're pretty happy that we're not trees and that everything is okay. The nomadic tribe elects a new leader. They're like, wow, maybe we shouldn't have been following that guy. And Rainier says, listen, I know you guys are legit. You kind of got stuck in with this guy over here. If you want, you can go join up with my father's tribe. I'm sure he'd be happy to help you. And they're like, you know, we still want to be our own tribe. And he's like, all right, well, I'll still send a raven to my father. So if you need help getting through the winter, just touch base with him. I'm sure he'll help you out. So that was their plan was to go meet up with Rainier's tribe and just hopefully get through the winter all right until they can regroup. After that battle though, it's time for another long rest. <laughs> Jan continues his proficiency training. Val goes and she actually does some pit fighting this time because you know she hasn't done any pit fighting in the city so why not? Plus, I mean the city's kind of in disarray at the moment and so I don't know how well bounty hunting would go. Plus Rainier, her like pit fighting partner is there so they go off to pit fight together. However, Val has a bit of a complication and she ends up beating up the son of a noble house so 
they're probably gonna cause her some issues later. We don't don't punch our pretty pretty boy. Renalfer gambles naturally. Brindis also continues with her gun proficiency, and Roz takes the time to do another right spell to transport us. But this time, we're not going to Holling Holman. We're going to a new place. We're going up north. So map time. So. This is about where we were dealing with all that big situation and we're trying to go up here to Yan Capping because we heard that there was an ice fiend up there which we just call ice friend because we're losers. But the problem is Roz has never transported up there so you can't really get on the dot. But that's fine because we probably get close enough but we end up in a snowy forest which could be in Yang Happing, it could be in Hogan Mart. I mean, it could really be, we could be in the realm of the White Witch, if we're being honest. Because we're not sure exactly where we are, we need to figure this out. So Brindis casts Fly on both Val and Renalfer, and they kind of shoot up to try to see what they could see. It's not the most successful, but I think they see a river, so we start to head towards that, because worst case scenario, we find a river, we can follow that somewhere. We get to the river, and there's some boats on the river, so that's super awesome because now if there's boats, there's people. While we're looking at the river and checking out the boats, five people come out of the woods. They're a little uppity to see us, but after we talk to them a bit that, hey, we're here to kill the ice fiend, they're like, oh yeah, he's normally in Ryudafell, which is not exactly where we are. It's kind of near where we are, but they're headed towards the ocean so they can take us on the river, which is nice because it saves us walking. They bring us for quite a while. They tell us stories about the ice fiend and how he's an Anshe and how he ended up getting to be how he is. And then they let us off around the area that he's last been known to be seen. Val starts to track because she, that's her wheelhouse. She is just ready to find this guy. And away we go tromping after this ice fiend. Once we found an area where it looks like he's traveling pretty regularly, we decide to set up a trap using the wizard as bait, which the wizard isn't cool with, but also the wizard recently got invisibility, so it's not so bad. <laughs> she could just disappear, it's gonna be fine. We're on snow, so it's not gonna be 100% helpful, but between something walking in the snow that you can't see and something that's punching you in the face, You'd probably go with the thing that's punching you in the face. We've been sitting there for about three hours when finally the ice fiend shows up, and once he sees the wizard, he just starts sprinting, and the wizard's like, bye! And then the two nomads, Rainier and Renalfer, manage to get this thing with a rope that they had ready against a tree, and they're kind of holding it. The problem is, he's an ice fiend, and he doesn't really take any damage at all from anything but magical weapons or magic. And that means that Jan, who has no magic, and Rainier, who has no magic, can't do anything. At least Rainier's able to hold the rope, so that's helpful. Brindis can summon weapons, so she summons one and throws it to Jan, so at least he can hit the Ice Fiend. And the two nomads just do their best to try to hold the Ice Fiend against the tree, and it is not going well, and it's not a fun situation. Normally in situations like this, we might just try to banish the thing, and then wait till it comes back. In the end though, Val manages to get the killing blow, and once more she picks up two blood points with a stab through the heart. Remember, just stab everything through the heart. And that is the end of the Ice Fiend slash Ice Friend. We cut off its head though, and we take it with us because we're like, hey, we should show people what we've done. And with that, that is the end of that session. It was a pretty successful session. We dealt with two big problems. I mean, technically the Ice Fiend wasn't really our problem. It's not in our province, but Brindis' goal is to have a united Highlands as a whole. And so making friends with people from other countries is definitely going to be helpful in that in the long run. If you enjoyed this session, make sure you do hit the like button down below and also subscribe so you'll know when I post next. And with that, I'll see you next time. <laughs>